Hey guys, Mark here, back with another quick tutorial. This time we're back into Illustrator. Um, some people have been asking a little bit about coloring illustrations in Illustrator and I'd seen a couple of other videos floating around that uh, weren't quite as efficient as I thought they could be. So I thought I'd whip up a quick video and just show you guys how I would add color to my illustrations. So the first thing I wanna show you is that a lot of people tend to use the brush tool uh, and I don't think it's the most efficient way. There's a couple of other ways that you can do it. Uh, if I were to just use these, I've got these two illustrations here that I've already drawn for an example. So I've got them on the same layer, which I'm just gonna lock temporarily. And I've made another layer underneath that I can use to color. So if I just grab the brush tool, um, I'll just pick pink for this one. Now if I just draw, uh, if you imagine if I'm just trying to color in this rose, for example. I could use the brush a lot bigger, but I'll just keep it small for now to demonstrate this point. If I color in like that, um, it's behind the illustration, which is good, so you can't see any overlapping over the lines. But if I select this pink that I've done, you'll see that those brush strokes have created a ton of strokes and uh, anchor points, which is really unnecessary. And one of the things that's kind of tricky is it's hard to tell if you've missed a spot. Uh, if you do this, you really have to zoom right in close and sometimes you'll find that you've missed a tiny little patch in there somewhere and that could show up if it was going to like a screen print or if it was gonna get blown up and printed on a giant A2 print, for example, um, which you don't want. So another issue with it is that by default, if you, I mean, you can technically disable this, right? But by default, if I were to scale this, this color up, the stroke around the letters scales down as well so um, all the gaps start to appear so if I were to send this to a client and then for some reason they were going to scale it up to print it on something then that could cause an issue as well technically I could expand the appearance of that and then unite it and stuff like that but again I don't know that it's entirely necessary to do that so instead a way that I like to color uh, instead is to use something called the blob brush tool. So instead of pressing B to get to the normal brush, you can just press shift B. It's also on the same um, tool on the left hand side over there. And instead, watch what happens when I color in now. I'm gonna make the brush bigger because that was a bit too small. So if I color in with the blob brush tool, like this, Again, it's behind it, but watch what happens when I select it now. If I select it, you'll notice that it's just one shape with the anchor points already set in. Um, so I don't have any of those crazy points. And then if I were to scale this up, it stays like that as well, which is handy. Um, and it's really easy for me to come in and just make sure that I've hit everything as well. You know, if there was, if I had missed a tiny, tiny uh, spot in here somewhere, it would sort of when I selected the path, it would show up in there as well. So I suppose it's kind of hard to demonstrate, but if I just try and kind of purposely miss a little bit, when I select this, there are anchor points there that I can see. Oh, it's given me pink on pink, which is unfortunate. Um, I'll just make it a different color real quick. Sorry about that. So if you imagine if this was just a really, really tiny gap, when I select this, I can see that there's anchor points in here, which is a dead giveaway that there's another shape in there that I've missed. And I can easily just either select those or even another really cool thing about the blob brush is that if I can select it again, I can just draw back over this space. And then if I select it, rather than having two separate shapes, it just automatically merges them like that. So you can easily just start adding to the outside of the shape and it just continues to become one shape so they just merge together hopefully that makes sense um, so yeah I feel like that's a, a bit faster that's all so another thing I can do is with this illustration the way that I added this black um, shadow area here was actually just by grabbing the blob brush tool oh sorry I've locked this layer so that's not going to work um, if you imagine for some reason if I want to add a black shadow um, just down near the bottom here again blob brush tool Got it set to black this time, and if I just, for some reason, decide that I want to color in the end of the dagger here as well. Release that, and notice when I select it, it's just merged it all as part of the one object, which is kind of handy as well. You don't have to do that, obviously. You could just draw it behind it like I did just before. So yeah, I just feel like that's a bit easier. Um, you also get more customization now, because I could go right into the individual anchor points and 
move them around real easily as well and adjust the shape if I decided to. So yeah, that's just the way that I like to do it. Um, you could also use the live paint tool if you decide to, which some people use, but um, yeah, I just feel like that's the, the easiest way that I get the most uh, flexibility with my, with my coloring. So, so yeah, um, another thing is that if, if you notice when I when I colored in this pink before uh, I ran over the black lines underneath so if I hide them you can see that we're sort of overlapping underneath if that makes sense and and it's very easy to get rid of that too you can just select both the illustration and the the painting part and then you can use the pathfinder tool and uh, down here you can select trim and it will trim the edges of that pink color to the outline now so if I select that by itself, you can see it's it's trimmed it around the edges so that there's no overlap. Not that it really matters that much, but um, yeah. So yeah, hopefully you guys found that easy to understand. Uh, hopefully I did an alright job of explaining it. But if you have any other questions about the way that I, I do anything in Photoshop or Illustrator, by all means, just, just uh, send over a message or feel free to put it in the comments and I'll try and make a video for you guys. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. The channel is still really new and it's starting to grow, which is awesome. Uh, and yeah, please, if you like the video, Feel free to give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel because it's a massive help. Thanks a lot guys.